We run a, a, I guess, a very different practice, and I want to thank the guys for putting us up here. I guess uh, we're probably not the usual design is, is kinky, semi-permanent fair, so hopefully, though, there will be something in this for you guys. These are friends of semi-permanent from uh, MySpace. Yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Gabby Fountain, Senior Creative at Block. Um, before we get into things, I just want to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land which we are presenting on today, um, and also the traditional custodians of Wajak Noongar Buja, um, where we live and work, back in Borulu, Perth. Um, this is Mark, he doesn't like to talk, <laughs> that's why I'm here, um, just kidding. But won't shut up when he does start talking. Um, <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm in a horrible before and after. I'm the after. You saw the before. That's what, 15 years of running a studio. I'm the uh, CD and co-founder with my wife, uh, well, now wife, of Block, and my shoelace is undone. Um, <laughs> so Block uh, turned 20 this year. Um, and that's, that's, that's pretty old. Um, this is Block in Perth, um, a studio we managed to uh, build five years ago. Um, this is how we were a couple months ago. Um, <laughs> uh, minus Joseph, thanks to Joanna and all the people at For The People. Um, but we have... <laughs> We've replaced him already with somebody <laughs> way, way, way better, so. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Why are we here? <laughs> That's a really good question. <laughs> I'm going to go. Um, yeah, go tie. Um, but before we get into that, I guess, how did we get here? Uh, so please bear with us while we explain our tortured metaphor. Mark? Yes. Um, so we're going to take you through a bit of a tortured metaphor. Um, imagine a petri dish um, with a bit of culture in it um, and a few nutrients. That petri dish is Perth, circa 2002. Um, into this petri dish, we introduce two foreign objects. Um, and again, for the purpose of this metaphor, um, one is myself oh, and the other is Tanya, my partner. Um, so, after returning to Perth after spending almost 20 years, uh, t sorry, our 20s, not 20 years, 20s working in the, the US and, and the UK. So, that uh, resultant growth um, we've called, uh, we call Block, and that's been our experiment we've been running for the last 20 years. Um, over the 20 years, it's grown somewhat, um, we're not massive. Um, but we have uh, enlarged a little, um, and we're still in the same petri dish. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> I was injected into Block about a year ago. <laughs> um, before that, I was working in London for a few years at a sustainability comms agency called Futera. If you haven't heard of Futera, check them out. They're doing awesome stuff for the world. Um, but yeah, COVID brought me back to Perth, and... I was around, well, Mark and Tanya were around the same age I was when they came back. It was a pretty similar situation. Uh, but I couldn't really be bothered starting my own studio, so I just got hired at Block instead. <laughs> um, yeah, and one thing about me is I'm a very curious person, um, so I do like to ask a lot of questions. <laughs> And I've asked Mark a lot of questions <laughs> since being at Block. 
you know, to try to save myself a bit of two decades of trial and error. Um, and Mark, being the extremely talkative person that he is, um, gave me absolutely nothing. And so... <laughs> <laughs> this story is going somewhere, I promise. So true. Um, one day he sent me this huge file of all the talks that he's ever done, which is actually quite a lot in that time, um, which was awesome for me. I went through it and swiftly pulled out all the stuff that I thought was really interesting and I filed it away, which turned out to be super convenient because that is basically what we're going to talk about today. Um, and Mark did try to help me order this <laughs> for the talk, um, but I think it's more a better... That's the agenda, today's agenda. Yeah, <laughs> this is it. But um, I think it's a better insight into Mark's brain, which is very yeah. chaotic and <laughs> stressful. Um, so without further ado, I present to you... Oh, there we go. 20 years of observations, the findings so far neatly categorised into 20 points in 20 minutes, over three chapters. Um, that sounds like a lot, but we're going to speed through stuff, and we've peppered some case studies in between where is relevant. Mark will talk through those. Um, and I just want to premise before we start that... <laughs> I know I said Mark doesn't like talking before, but he, once you get him going, he loves to ramble, so I might encourage him to move on from points um, abruptly if we need to. <laughs> Um, to stop him from waffling. Uh, but that's what I'm doing now, so let's start. <laughs> Chapter one. No person or business or thing is an island. Except, of course, islands. Oh, they're islands. Um, yeah, so... This is, yeah, so this <laughs> chapter is all, I guess, Oops. stuff Sorry. that relates to us as, you know, sentient beings uh, <laughs> interacting with the, the, the world around us. Yes. Um, yeah, so finding one. You can't be cool forever, unfortunately. Uh, but you can be learned, or as I learned recently, learned forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I love this shit. Um, this is the stuff... I love doing. This is um, a project called Greater Curtain, which we named and didn't identity for, all of that usual crap. But what I loved about it is being able to take a deep dive into something. And we had the privilege uh, to be asked to provide the vision that the entire, um, the overarching vision that the entire um, design team would be working on for Curtin University campus, which is one of the biggest universities in Australia, 80,000 students, um, and it's a 20-year um, plan for the university. Um, so I got to do a massive deep dive into the history of the university, including Buckminster Fuller, uh, your second mention today, um, and actually develop what became, I guess, the the inspiration for the master plan, but looking at a day in the life of. So I ended up knowing and learning more about the university um, than anyone. Ended up, um, obviously, yeah, the identity, logo, all of that stuff, but then producing the... Uh, yeah, keep going. Um, <laughs> but what is amazing about this for me is that that idea is actually literally being built into the, into the um, campus at the moment for the next 20 years. Um, the logo will go, the name may or may not uh, change, but you know, that thinking is becoming a university for students of the, the future, and that's kind of cool. Um, so it's cooler than logos. What you're trying to say <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. is deep dive into the subject and client you're working on. Make yourself the expert and therefore invaluable to yeah. the client. Um, Thanks. And being trendy is cool, but being learned is cooler. Isn't that right, Mark? Yeah, yeah. and I know. Cool. You would know. Um, finding number two. Can you get there from here? So, this is a, a project um, from a few years ago that got a bit of recognition. Um, we do a lot of work in the cultural space, like a lot of uh, creative studios. But when we first set up Block, um, it's an area we wanted to, to work in, but we had no um, kind of experience um, in. So 
we kind of just started um, on, on that path. So we, we, we did looked at work that we could do within that, that space. Uh, we joined the Young Friends of the Art Gallery because we were young then, um, <laughs> and produced all of the, the work for the exhibition openings. That led to us um, getting into Craft West, which became Form, similar to Object in, in Sydney. Um, we got to work on all their exhibitions, um, and then out of that got to do uh, a first book, um, uh, which got us our first Agda Award, and then um, a whole series of books. Um, we'll ask Ben to, um, to, we're not responsible for all of this. They had the festival in 2005, came to us, they had shot this stuff, they didn't know what to do with it, they didn't know how to create something out of it, so we comped this together and we just worked on this image uh, we basically photoshopped for them. Um, but that um, led us to working for the Revelation International Arts Festival, their 10th anniversary, a multi-event um, multi uh, arts festival. So we got to figure out how that all works. Um, another independent arts uh, program called Artopia, we did that. And then that led us back to the, uh, the festival that we worked on for, for six years. And again, this stuff was really awesome back then. Um, <laughs> and then, um, so yeah, and then kind of that is now a, a major part of what we, we do. Not only are we designing for that community, but we're part of that community. So this is some work um, we got to do for the State Theatre Black Swan, uh, State Theatre Company. Um, a couple of years ago. Cool. And just to overview Mark's point in a succinct manner, um, start small, be strategic about where you want to end up and pick the cl right clients to get there. So, yeah, case study videos, my saviour, um, and yours. Um, so, nurturing your roots, that, you know, the thing about being in, in, in Perth um, is that there is a really tight, awesome community um, of having moved back there, a community of, of creatives we grew up with, um, creatives that have um, moved and we've discovered each other. Um, so, you know, we have the advantage of having those deep roots in a place, um, but also having this amazing opportunity to have, have kind of grown um, our, our branches. So, a, you know, a, a guy we came through with that, um, you know, during the 90s as creatives in Perth, um, Ned McNeilage went off, did amazing things, Wonderman and other places along with Linda. Um, took a year off, was looking back to get back into the, the business in the States, and this was in 2004, I think. So we put together these lovely, huge folios um, on actual paper and printed folios. Um, got to work with him again uh, almost 20 years later when he was looking for work 
once again and created his, his um, an, a website and identity for him, um, which Oops. led us to emergence. Emergence is part cult, part um, creative festival in Margaret River. Um, unfortunately, it looks like it's been killed um, because of COVID. Um, it's the best kept secret, but um, our association with Emergence, we were able to bring Ned into that, um, who now kind of you know has joined a whole, whole kind of creative, uh, I guess, expat c community. Um, and that emergence community formed the backbone for us to create um, this campaign this year, which, yeah, it's the launch of a big-ass shopping centre, um, but we were able to do um, with that network um, some pretty, um, or be able to support that network in a pretty uh, great way. Yeah, exactly, and it was great when a lot of yeah. creatives came back from overseas and they could work together on this project. Um, yeah, so if you're uh, in Perth at the end of last year, you'd never want to hear that song again. Um, <laughs> they may have overdone the media by a little bit. Um, there's a big wide world out there. Um, look, I, I think this doesn't come as any surprise to the experienced uh, people in the room. Um, but. Yeah, you know, being involved in the the community and the world outside the, the studio um, is fundamentally in, important to us. Um, it's yeah, so you know, where I've been uh, past president of the PADC um, was on the outside oh, Perth Advertising and Design Club. Um, I yeah, and um, you know, design redesigned the award show years ago. We made the decision that. Um, you know, could we actually just, if, you know, having trouble getting people into the ward, if we create a ward people want, um, then they'll enter it. Um, so we, uh, we did uh, develop what became the skulls and the diamond skulls. These things weigh a ton um, and just get stolen by the international judges um, that we invite. Um, so, you know, that was amazing when we did that you know, entries went up about 200%, um, and they cost us about 600 bucks a pop. But then the, the kind of, again, being in Perth, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see, you know, Gabby and I met on the PADC committee, 
and then it's you know, Gabby and um, Joseph, um, formerly of Block, um, <laughs> have kind of become the next generation of, of uh, that kind of creative scene in Perth. You yeah. can go to... Yeah. yeah, so before I started at Block, um, Joseph and I have, we're like, we're friends for ages, and we both got asked to um, do the new brand identity, well, the campaign identity for the 2021 PADCs after two, one or two years of not having it due to COVID. Um, so we concepted the idea of resurrecting people's creativity, um, and it was this was a cool project because we also got to work with um, our friend Kevin Wilson, who is a great designer at Nani Creative, but he's also um, an amazing DJ, DJ Yikes. Um, and he... He's cool. <laughs> he is cool. Um, he did the sound design for this, so it was really cool to just collaborate with people that we had met in the community as well, and Joseph and I met through just being involved in stuff in Perth. So, yeah, it was a really nice round circle. Cool. Um, and yeah, that led to kind of um, at the towards the end of my my time and my presidency. Um, you know, I really saw a gap in uh, West Australians uh, creatives advocating for West Australian creativity, um, and you know, um, started. Um, I guess vocalising um, that on some social channels and you know talking to clients um, who uh, profess their proud West Australianness um, by using Eastern States creatives um, and agencies. <laughs> so you know it kind of started into a bit of a uh, activist space, which uh, yeah led to kind of the end of my tenure at the PADC. Um, <laughs> Uh, but also led at the beginning of uh, COVID to um, join a, a group of uh, independent creatives um, to put together a, um, a, a program called Revive WA, which was all about buying uh, local during uh, COVID and supporting, um, yeah, supporting local. And kind of out of that, um, I, that, recognition of the need for the advocacy for independent uh, WA um, creative communications businesses um, led me to suggest to our CEO, Nat, that we create an organisation that does that rather than me just ranting on Facebook. Um, and so um, in WA was formed, which is, yeah, the association um, that is, represents independent uh, West Australian uh, creative businesses um, and, you know, supported by the likes of um, some of the guys you see presenting tomorrow. Um, speaking of ranting on Facebook, that leads perfectly into chapter two, oh. Old Man Yells at Cloud. <laughs> so this is more about Mark's worldly experience. Yeah, so we need to get going. This is, um, <laughs> yeah, those who give a shit uh, probably yeah, are the shit. And, you know, it was a big compliment to Gabby that I disguised as giving a shit. And those who think they're the shit probably are shit. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, my CEO is freaking out on the end of this. So. Come to, stop swearing. Um, so, you know, I try and hire the former. <laughs> um, persistence is more important than talent. Yeah, look, I mean, we can't control how talented we are. I think we all, all know that. Um, you know, you're given a certain amount of talent at birth, but what you can do is work harder, um, you know, learn more, um, put the time in, um, and then just be doggedly um, determined uh, to get where you want to get. I have no idea what this means. In the wise words of our Lord and Saviour, Britney Spears, you better work, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Finding number seven. Oh, seven. Yeah, 10,000 so, hours. <laughs> and um, then the work starts. Yeah, this does sound like I'm encouraging burnout, and I, yeah, yes. I feel like the before bit in a um, never sit still um, presentation. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Uh, 
this isn't about, for me, it's not about putting the hours in at the studio necessarily. It's about that love and respect and learning a craft. And, you know, unless you want to, you know, unless you love it and want to, to really uh, work at it, um, I really don't see the point because there's a hell of a lot easier ways to, to earn, earn money. And, you know, getting to that point where you've learnt your craft is a start um, and then, you know, really putting that into action and taking it where you want it to go. Um, next one's self-explanatory. Um, you know, as a, I think this is probably at young designers, it's, it's, it's like I don't, you know, get anything. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, not about the aesthetic. It's not about a lifestyle. It's really um, about learning your craft, doing great work, and, and hopefully making a difference in the world. Um, yeah. Um, and for me, there's only the work. Nobody sees, you know, strategy is incredibly important, nobody, but nobody sees it. Um, nobody sees the excuses, nobody sees the lack of budget, what they see is what we make um, and what we put out into the world and, you know, that's all that, that matters at the end of the day. Be annoyingly resilient, just keep coming back. Um, you know, the idea that you happen to get the, out of the infinite solutions to any brief, you happen on the only one that really matters and the client won't buy that um, because they don't see your creative genius. Um, you know, it's go back to the well. There's always another solution. And keep going back, keep going back until um, you, yeah, you really run out of uh, clients. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chapter three, blockosophy. <laughs> blockosophy. <laughs> you wrote it. Um, uh, there's no you in branding. Um, We've kind of done a lot of beer work, um, starting with Feral, Other Side, um, and Bailey Brewing Company, and all they have in common is that they make beer. Um, their audiences are completely different, their positions are completely different, and how they do it all successfully is completely different. There's no... That's who Block serves. Our, our job is to find that and be the conduit from, from who they are, what they want to be, uh, find them a position in the market and connect them to a, an audience. Yeah, and I think it's also important to mention here, we don't design from personal taste or from the client's personal taste. <laughs> it's about the work. Um, and I think this is really important, and again, Nat, my CEO, Sorry, screaming Nat. down the computer. Um, I'm talking about the toxic ones here. Um, it, it, you know, the longer a toxic relationship goes on with a client, the, the worse it is for, for everybody involved. And, and I'm not talking about the clients who are necessarily difficult. I'm talking the clients who are assholes. And yeah, I'm you may you. have made the mistake uh, in, in taking them on in the first place. Um, you know, cut it off as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> words is good. <laughs> Spelling sucks. Um, look, we only get to work with um, words, pictures, um, and, and layout. Um, so, you know, I've always loved the written word, not so much the spoken word. Um, and that's integral to yeah, what we do and the work we, we do. So it's yeah. not design isn't a visual, just a visual media for me. Oh, God. Okay. We're running out of time. Yep. Dollars Shit. don't equal impact. Yep. Um, this was a, the last commercial I worked on before I left the, the States. Uh, Olympus spending $90 million in three months um, on, um, on a campaign to, uh, for digital cameras. Um, $19 million in three months. Um, and probably by the time I touched down in Perth, everybody had forgotten about it. Um, Whereas, you know, I've got the, had the opportunity to work with the Dockers, um, which has been, you know, a life-changing experience. Um, this is like a boy's dream come true. Um, <laughs> and, you know, on a very, very tight budget, that's my son, um, and got to draw him into the, the launch, the biggest, next oh to the biggest footballer ever. Keep going. Um, I've got to keep going. But Tattoos. the passion. And avocados. things like avocado, we're going to be talking about later. And so, embrace the chaos. appropriate, embrace the chaos. Right now. Keep going. <laughs> K 
chaos is a good thing. Film check, none of the first client we ever had. Woulda, coulda, uh, shoulda. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. Plan C. We can't play this. Oh. We're not allowed award, to do that. Everyone, everyone knows uh, awards awards are shows are bullshit. Agda Awards have just opened. Um, but everybody knows that. <laughs> Enter. It's they're really important. Um, every opportunity is. Oh, are you Sorry, doing that? Everything's an opportunity. Uh, okay. Motivation is fluid. Um, it changes over time. What's next? Oh, okay. Stop. So we've got to finish though. And okay, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, if 20 years have taught me anything, it's that. Here's our reel. <laughs> That way, that way. <laughs> that was so good.